Hi there, everybody. I'm, I'm gonna try my best to look at the camera, but I'm probably not going to. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Today, uh, you, once again, you may realize that uh, Jonathan's not uh, opening for us. That's because Jonathan is spending time with his sister. Hope you guys are having a great time out in California. Uh, but nonetheless, we, we push on without him today. So it's just me and Alex hanging out. Alex, how are you doing? I am tired as hell, but yeah, I'm here. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Watched a good movie. How about you? I'm good. I'm chilling. I, uh, it's been a, a busy day, but I feel like I got a lot done today. And then on top of that, I uh, got, to, got to watch a new movie, so that's always exciting. And what was the new movie we just watched? We today watched Cruella, the new Disney film that is premiering both on Disney Plus and in theaters. Uh, and uh, we watched it on Disney Plus, didn't watch it in theaters. But I'm not going to lie, and this is probably giving a hint to uh, my thoughts on the movie. Uh, or at least general thoughts. But I do wish I kind of would have seen this in theaters. Yeah. This movie was really cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, first, before, uh, if you guys haven't listened to an episode before, how we do this is we make some general commentary uh, for the first half. And then the second half, we kind of get into the spoiler section. Uh, it might go a little bit quicker because we don't have our third person with us. So, but we'll give you a heads up before we get into any real spoilers. Um, but I agree with you. I kind of wish I had seen it in the theaters because this was... I was surprised. I was surprised how much I enjoyed this film. I wasn't ready for that. I was like really into it. Like it was good fashion. Emma Stone, Emma Thompson, like both played their characters to a T. They were done so well, I think. They picked very good actresses for them. And just mm -hmm. like, yeah, no, I enjoyed it. What about you? I really do like this movie. Uh, it gave me what I asked for when I when they started saying they were going to do these villain movies. Uh, I was very disappointed with Maleficent. Um, I expected her to be a lot more vile and and dark. Uh, and they kind of lightened it up a bit. But I think now after like when you're making a movie after stuff like Joker's come out and... Uh, so many other movies where you know you can play you can make a sympathetic character but it still be dark they kind of took notes from that and this movie's a lot better uh cruella feels more fleshed out but still doesn't feel like she's too light to be con like, that you couldn't see her becoming the person that she is I in think, the 101 I, dalmatians I think movies. with the melissa Ma Ma maleficent maleficent movies i think the whole big problem was that they didn't actually make her character evil in that movie. Right. So there was no way to tie it to the, like, the actual Disney Cinderella or uh, Sleeping Beauty movies or anything like that. She was a completely different character. Uh, in the Cruella one, Cruella knows she's evil. She knows she's bad. She kind of fights against it for a second. She has this like internal battle. But then she's also like, eh, I'm also just evil a little bit. So I'm going to run with that. And I think Melissa Fint was just so much like, Oh, Sleeping Beauty, I Must Protect Aurora, which is my mommy's name, by the way. Um, Cruella really saw that she had a darkness in her, and she's like, I'm going to run with it. I like it. Which I respect her for that. I, I like that in this movie, uh, we get a lot of, like, like we, get, we get a lot of understanding of who Cruella is. Because uh, for preparation for this movie, I watched both the animated movie, well, we watched both the animated 101 Dalmatians movie and the live action 101 Dalmatians movie uh, to see how it would compare. And while I can't see this character becoming the Cruella in the live action movie, I don't think she's, I know when we, when we talked about the trailer in that predictions episode or a trendings episode, I was like, yeah, I could see her becoming Glenn Close. After watching the live action movie, she's not going to be Glenn Close, Cruella. But I can definitely see her being the animated movie's version who of was, Cruella. Who is more evil or crazier? The I think, animation or the live action? I think the live action is more insane. Like, Cruella is just like a hundred all the time versus in the animated movie, she is like high energy and definitely like very theatrical, but. She doesn't like she doesn't show like that psychotic side until it nears the end. Up until that point, she just seems like a very controlling woman who's like 
always gets what she wants no matter what. Which is kind of like the Emma Thompson character. It wasn't until the end when the losing parts that it was that where she kind of flipped. But yeah, in general, this movie was really good and it passed a lot of the expectations I had for it. I oh yeah was not anticipating enjoying it as much as I did. I think and, and to end off wrap end off my general thoughts. I think the biggest thing just to get on, to talk about some technical stuff. I love the production design in this movie. It's top notch. Um, the acting is really good from even like the supporting cast. They're fantastic. And I'm going to be looking up actors' names like crazy <laughs> because I want to make sure I get everyone's names right. And I'm going to do that right now and pull up the IMDb. Um, but overall... Going, going on the technical route too, but with the fashion, because that's a technical thing. Um, the film is set back in the 1960s during the London's you know high fashion time where punk was starting to rise. And what was really nice about this film is they stayed true to the punk fashion of that day because the punk fashion of the 60s and 70s were insane i mean in the 80s you think about leather and chains and spikes and that's pretty much about it and like big hair but like the 60s and 70s when punk was starting to rise that was cool and i think that it was a nice choice to have corella almost appear more punk because that right away would make her people think in the high fashion that She's insane. Clearly she's insane if she's like wearing these type of outfits when you should be having like these elegant gowns. Well, I think also helps too is that while she's doing a punk-ish fashion, it's blended really well with like tour and yeah. high fashion at that. So it's not just, oh, I'm just going to slick back the hair and wear some leather. It's like, I'm going to wear some leather that's super well cut and designed and yeah, put together no, it's the, the in a way thing. that's like super unique. Yeah. And I think that's like what they helps they elevate it even more. They didn't more. skimp on the fashion here. Yeah. Which I, they did their research. They clearly did their research. Um, all right. Now we're going into the spoiler round. If you haven't watched the movie yet, uh, I recommend going to watch it. It's on Disney Plus. Um, it is a premium purchase, so you do have to buy it. Or we're going to go see it in the theaters or, you know, find a streaming network, but you didn't hear from us. Um, <laughs> I would say, yeah, as you could tell, we did like the movie. So that's just. We have glowing recommendations if you're into 101 Dalmatians or just into a, a nice, like a villain movie, I, mean, I would say go watch it. I I'd say go, go like give, it a, give it a shot. You know what? Um, again, in spoiler territory now, I am not one for Disney films like, like the classic ones, maybe Aristocats. And when I was younger, I used to love Pinocchio. I used to make my mom put it on every night. Which now, I think that's a little disturbing. But then again, I used to like horror films as a kid, so Pinocchio was kind of disturbing. Anyhow. Um, and I wasn't too big fan of 101 Dalmatians either. But this movie, on its standing on its own, is a good movie. First off, like I said, with Emma Thompson, you get to see her, Corella's character, as a little kid. Her name is Estella. And you can, her hair, she is born with black hair and white hair. Split down the middle, and she is never explained. By the way, I still that still got me. I was like, I I know, but it's just one of those things where I'm like, who? What's with your parents? What? What's with their genes that you came out with hair that's nothing like the the no 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 offense, (laughs) or with all due respect, British people tend to have a lot of inbreeding, especially in the higher classes. Um, so it's not out of the realm that something weird could happen like that. All right. It was just it was just strange. I think you're just focused far too much on it. I it wasn't a, it wasn't a problem. It's not you it doesn't take away it, from the movie. You brought but it up. But it's just something where I was like I need answers. Times. What is up? <laughs> you brought it up multiple times throughout the film. Anytime the black and white hair appear, why is it like that? Why was she born like that? It's just a weird Anytime. choice cuz I like the idea it's that not. she it's her persona that she cho- that she chooses to wear her hair that way, not oh, I was just born this way. Okay, but, but how? <laughs> but that's the whole thing about Corella. Like, in the movie, it's really about nurture versus nature. She had... I won't give away the biggest part of Corella. I'm, and I'm Actually, sure, I'm sure it's, but, it's like, based off of the idea that, like, she's born kind of dual with the duality. Because she's playing two people. She's born as both Estella yeah, but then she and the red hair. Cruella. So both of them exist within her. I get, I get the symbolism. Then let it go. It's just one of those things where I'm just like, 
All right, but you expect me to believe that this world is realistic, though, too. <laughs> People have, were, are born with anomalies all the time. Split hair color is not that big of a deal. And then also, so that was like a good thing. And then just... Yeah, no, the the film starts with her as a young girl kind of seeing and then raising and the tragedy. Of course, being Disney as it is, uh, losing her mother. Which we called that. Of course. Like well, super, su- we were like, the, this mom is too nice to she's survive. too nice and too supportive of, <laughs> of, of Cruella. So of course she's going to die in some tragic way that's going to haunt her. And technically it was at the hands of a Dalmatians. They were being controlled. Um but they were at the hands of Dalmatian, so I can understand why she hates Dalmatians. Well, that's the thing. And, and maybe I haven't, re- I haven't read the book, so I can't say if the, if the book 100 Dalmatians, she hates Dalmatians. But in the movies, she's never hated them. She just doesn't care about them. She's just like, I, I mean, if you have to kill them so I can get this fur coat, I don't care. But it's not like a thing where she's like, I specifically want well, to make sure this movie, I make Corolla. a coat out of Dalmatians. <laughs> well, she also wanted those specific Dalmatians, too. She could have, like, there's plenty of puppy pounds around there. She well, I mean, in the old movies, she is, she does buy, like, other Dalmatians from pounds. It's just, she needs more, and she's like, I know y'all, so just give me your puppies. Anyway, <laughs> uh, she meets her uh, ragtag team, what are their names? Uh, Horace and Jasper, played yeah. by Joel Fry, who plays Jasper. And Paul Walter Hauser. I didn't like they. Of course they did. They had Jasper and Quilla have like this little moment of will they or won't they type thing. I didn't yeah. like that. I, I I didn't like it at first, but I'm glad they didn't go there. That it's like it starts yeah, yeah. there, and then it's like, oh wait, are they trying to make Jasper and Cruella hook up now? And then quickly, like after she becomes Cruella, like that's squashed, and they are just like, uh, no, so we're like friends. If, is, if you can call it that. Like, reluctant friends. It's still a friends. weird relationship they all have got going on. Uh, what, 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 what are your comments on this movie? Um, I think it's good. I like a lot of the uh, fashion, but I also like the... Cause I th- and we said it before um, when we were talking, also talking about the... In the... I keep mentioning that episode. Watch the Trending Topics episode of February, by the way. It's a great episode. But in there, we talked about how Cruella is a very unique villain and that she's not, she's wicked, but not in the sense that she wants to like destroy the world or anything like that. She just wants to be number one. Like, she always wants to be like the most fashionable person in the room. She's, she's a narcissist and hardcore one at that. And that's an interesting villain to kind of have as your, your main protagonist um, for her own movie. And I think they do a really good job of balancing that. Where you still feel for her, you never at one point are like, she I'm not on your side. Yeah. yeah. Like, but it, it... Well, there are points. There are points, but I think they hit near the end when you clearly are like, all right, well, you're going too far now. You're, you're being a jerk for no reason. Especially when it comes to Jasper and Horace. But I, yeah. I appreciate that, though, because granted, like, since I watched those other movies, well, those older movies before this... I think they do a great job of making it where you, you're right. This movie on its own, fantastic. Yeah. You can watch this movie having never even heard of 101 Dalmatians and have a good time. But if you have seen 101 Dalmatians, I think it'll it's a great companion piece. Like this is a great companion piece to watch with it because it does a great job of setting up the connective tissue to that movie of like, why does she, okay, if their relationship in this movie is that Horace and Jasper meet her as a little girl and, and essentially take her in. And then she becomes the boss later and is like super mean to them. Why is she like that? If they're supposed to be like really cool. And it's like, I, this movie does a great job setting up. Oh no, maybe the persona of Cruella takes over and she just becomes a jerk, but they do what she says anyway. Cause they're like, we got history. And they do a lot yeah. of stuff like that where I'm like, they do a great job of setting up that stuff so you don't feel like, um, it doesn't feel like, or good to go back to Maleficent, it doesn't feel like Maleficent is its own thing, Sleeping Beauty is its own thing. This feels more like I could watch Cruella and then immediately pop in 101 Dalmatians and it feels like, oh, now here's the sequel. Like, here's the next one, next chapter. I wonder if they will make a sequel because it kind of felt like they had uh, an intention when... 
At, there is a nice little credit scene where they give the dogs to the Dalmatians to the people who are supposed to have it, Roger and Anita. Mm-hmm. Um, however, it's Corella who gives them, which I found weird. But like, yeah, I kind of get that. But we don't know where they get their dogs from in the original source material either. So it, it doesn't seem too far of a stretch that maybe that's where she gets them from. Or that's where they what get them. What was your like from. favorite scene? Uh, easily the moths. That was a badass. The scene. moths are so, so. It's cool not only because it's a cool looking scene, but because of the surprise of how it happens. That so, was like that's awesome. Yeah, Corolla designs an amazing dress for uh, the Baroness, and the Baroness is a woman she works for for the fashion world. She creates a beautiful dress, and she looks like gems or stones or. They look kind of like diamonds, yeah. Yeah, beading is put all over this dress, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Put in a vault. Later on, you find out that all those little beads and things were actually eggs of moths, which was absolutely insane. So when they opened the vault, all the dresses were ruined for the big fashion show. And just the cleverness of that. The cleverness of this whole movie was really well done. This movie comes up with some great capers. Yeah. It, some really good capers. They, they like make these really good like moves of like, the way, the way Cruella overshadows the Baroness, she does it in these different styles and different techniques, of course, to show like, oh, this is, you know, out with the old and with the new. The way she does it is just always very clever, like appearing out of garbage and having that beautiful long dress of garbage. The train be like the, the trashy the dresses. The trash bag, yeah. And every like fashion thing she really came in with was something that was definitely well thought out this movie was surprisingly well thought out for for like a disney live action film i feel like disney live action films are never well thought out i think it's because this one tried to be it it tried less to rely on nostalgia and more tried to be like let's tell an original story because most of the live action movies they've made so far, like Aladdin and Lion King and Cinderella, all of them really heavily rely on, hey, remember this old movie you like? Well, we're just going to do that. And it's like, okay, but I already have the old movie. Why do I need to watch your movie? Yeah, they really fucked up with Lion King. Right. Like, it's like, I already have that. So I don't That's need true. to watch your movie. Versus this one feels like it is its own unique thing. We're doing our own stuff making up new characters like we're really going for it to like do a cruella movie and it works yeah it no, works some really of the new well characters for me. they brought in even were were well placed in there they didn't feel like a lot of the times when you have a sequel or a remake of a movie or a remake of a show or something they bring in this character that you're like this wasn't in the original and they feel off because you know they were an original. They were kind of they're kind of forced into the storyline mm-hmm. to create a plot later on. But there were multiple characters that were added into Cruella's like backstory that you're like, I could have definitely seen them in One Hundred One Dalmatians. Like I I actually caught myself wondering like, hey, was this person an add on or were they really in there because they weirdly fit? What was the name of the one? Oh, the 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 blonde guy. Oh, Artie. Artie? Play, yeah, Artie. Played by John McCree. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Artie him. was a character that is an add-on. He owns a little shop in London uh, holding on to vintage outfits. Uh, Cruella meets him, and she realizes that he does have very good fashion taste. He's on, you know, the cutting room where he's like, look at the vintage, but we can do something new with vintage. And so it's like this, like moving forward even though he can appreciate the past and that is like a good character to have because it's the same way with her appreciate who estella was but moving forward there's corella there's something wicked and wild and that's what he liked and Artie just fit in really well he felt like he belonged there i also i think that's also he's a great add on like i said like they do a really good job of fleshing out the world in this movie of like her her london you know especially because she starts out as a thief yeah and so and then when they're like Oh, well, you're going to fashion school. I'm like, okay, does she, how she get the fabric to make her own outfits and start her? I was curious the whole time, like, how is she going to start her own fashion business and become, like, this epic fashionista as she is in, like, the 101 Dalmatians? And I love the idea that she, gets, she starts out pulling clothes from essentially a thrift shop. 
Yeah. Because that's like how, uh, just knowing some fashion students when I would go to art school, that's how a lot of them got started. Was like, I would, they would go to thrift shops and find stuff and, and then it. reinvent it for themselves. And I was like, and so I, I like that angle. I think that's a really cool idea. Something that just popped in my head when you were talking about her London. Uh, if, you, if you're watching the movie, you'll also notice that London is very packed at the beginning of the film with Cruella and who she is and everything. But as her narcissism grows, as she becomes more Cruella than she was the other character, um, the people in London tend to diminish. There's no longer people walking on the streets. There's no longer cars. It's like she literally does become her own world. They take out mm. those characters. They take out those people that are just walking down the street because they're no longer a part of her world. They're not valid or important to her anymore. And that, yeah, I could see that where as the narcissism grows in her, the whole world around her, London, which is one of the busiest cities in the world, literally empties because it's supposed to be just her and her like crew. True. Uh, I also have to give a shout out to, uh, I just said their names and I can't remember. Well, Joel Fry, but I remember, was it, was it, was it Walter? Uh, Walter Hauser. It's John, I think it's John Walter Hauser is his full name. Is that it? Paul. Sorry. Paul Walter Hauser. Put, like, put some respect on both their names. They were fantastic. They were. I love them as Jasper and Horace. I think they do a great job with the comedy Especially Paul Walter Hauser. I, so far, he's not been in anything that I like. Everything he's been in so far, I have loved his him as a character actor. Like the man can just transform into people. It's he's got great talent, and I'm glad to see him doing his thing. Um, but he's incredible. Uh, him and jo- him and Jasper both, but I think him more spef- more specifically because he has yeah. more of the comedy stuff to do than Jasper does, and they're just phenomenal. They are phenomenal <laughs> as, yeah. a, as a duo. Jasper plays the emotional support to Corella a lot. And like that's sometimes like, yeah, I can see that. But that's where that shift and change in. But the, what was his name? Hauser? Paul Walter Hauser. Paul Walter Hauser. Um, he definitely kind of steals it when it comes to the henchmen. He's much more entertaining than the henchmen in the other two Dalmatians. They movies. are. Yeah. <laughs> they are very, they are way more entertaining in this. They still have that same vibe of like, there's the tall skinny one, the short fat one, fatter one stupid, the skinny, the taller one, you know, is like stupid, but not as stupid. But they still have that same like vibe to that, but they're still very clever, both of them. And, you know, he's not some bumbling buffoon either that I, they have made him yes. out to be in like the animation and the live action he's mm. very skilled you know he knows how to pick pockets pick pocket well not really the the beginning the like there's a scene where they're all on a, a triple decker bus to be fair she's like the only one that does like the messed up pickpocket no the, he know. opens up a purse he moves it around oh yeah or was that jasper i didn't one of them i think it was jasper that did that it might have been Jasper. either way when they did the pickpocketing scene they clearly did not practice that very well because like <laughs> emma thompson goes into a man's pocket like really goes in and then jasper's character goes like into a woman's purse and it has like a class where you have to like turn it pop it open and then like he was rifling around um yeah no they were more clever more skilled they did like he was able to scale like a balcony <laughs> and fall and on a cake and just walk away he's like all right i'm good you just keep going. It was, they were really cool. I was glad. I wasn't sure how they were going to play a part because I remember seeing, like, oh, Jasper and Horace has been cast. I was like, okay. Like, they're the two bumbling idiots. Why do I care about them? And they did a great job of making you not only sympathize with them when Cruella was being really mean. I mean, she just straight up knocks his cereal over, like, forget your yeah, cereal, cuz, and just rude. knocks his cereal over. I was like, hey, I was eating that. Like, are you serious? I would understand if she had done that and like thrown the paper where the mess was, but she just knocks everything off the table and still just puts the newspaper on like a corner. And that was like, dude, you're just wasting food. Which I love that they did mention it. He's like, what about my breakfast? Which is currently on the floor. What about my breakfast, Corella? And she's like, bye, elevator going down. And I was like, that's just disrespectful. I do like though that Corella is is a personality. I did like that. Because I wasn't, I mostly just because it, it tied like because I remember a lot of people when the trailer came out giving the, comparing this to Joker vibes, 
And while I, after watching the movie, I don't think it's that level. Like, Joker is like a, a very psychological breakdown of like a man clearly having, struggling with jo his psychology jo or, his, or his psychosis. psychosis. Jo Joker wasn't originally a part of him. He was something that was pulled like yeah born born from like, struggle yeah struggle and humiliation taken and like deformed and created mm -hmm. Corella has always been in her like when she was a child her mom was like look you have you're cruel sometimes you gotta be nice that's it so like Cruella was always there internally and she also not like the joke they were the say the psychological events that occurred that caused Cruella to become more prominent but it was well placed when it came to Corella. Yeah. There was even though it was a horrible event, there was mean and there was reason and there was cause to every horrific event that happened. With the Joker, his life was just straight up terrible. And right. people were just cruel to be cruel. I think yeah, I think this does well, I think that's also half of, just to talk about Emma Thompson some, it's also that Emma Thompson was the perfect nemesis to Cruella. I, like, I, yeah, I really yeah. love the Baroness in this. I shouldn't, but I really loved her. because It's hard not to. It, it is. Because like the Baroness, <laughs> ev not evil. Vicious. vicious. I would say vicious. Vicious. <laughs> a vicious, vicious woman. Vicious and narcissistic. Um, but she... Even though she is cruel and, you know, borderlining on, like, horrible, she's still weirdly encouraging to her people for when they actually present something that is amazing and that is wonderful. She's like, yeah, this is it. She, she openly admits, yes, this is great. I think it's just that she has a respect for her adversaries that are, are her equals. Like, she's like, all right, you got me. Right, but... At the time, but I'll be back when though. when Emma Thompson <laughs> wasn't her equal yet. She was Estella. She was just her like intern or whatever or however employee, one of her designers on her teams. She still gave her this encouragement. She's like, "Oh, you're something." Like, but I think she could recognize like, okay, right, but a few more designs and you'll probably be like where I'm at. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Even though she was like manipulative. When she saw talent, she didn't go like, oh, this is disgusting. And then, like, copy and steal behind. Like, that's how they uh, show some people in, like, the fashion world and, like, movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, this is disgusting. You're getting nowhere. And then they steal the design. They, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, it was awful, but I made it better. She was like, no. She's like, that is better. She There was a scene where uh, Estella, you know, erased the line. She's like, you need to make it more straight, more form-filling. And Emma Thompson's the the Baroness was just like, ugh, you're right. That is good. Damn it. Now I will say I did because I remember seeing the trailer for this and I immediately thought, well, I, I did have the same thought as some people where I was like, oh, maybe it might be have some Joker vibes just because of how dark the cinematography is. But for me, it was more like, is this gonna be just Devil Wears Prada, but starring Cruella instead of Anne Hathaway? And I think they did a good job of like having elements of that movie in here, but not having the whole thing be Devil's Wear the well, Devil yeah, Wears well, Prada. Because Samara Streep's character in the Devil Wears Prada was an unforgiving, pleasing boss. Who but like with Emma Thompson's character, it's not that she was unforgiving. She was like, Well, you messed up, but I like this design. And she she didn't people weren't more like oh yeah she's coming she's coming into the room watch out watch out emma thompson's character was like people followed her in they knew she was coming but they were ready and presented you know it was just a different vibe there was less fear like this woman's a murderer but she, there was less fear being around her than you would with the meryl streep character in devil wars prada which is funny because we did compare emma thompson to meryl streep Constantly. <laughs> well, no, they but both have that same vibe. Of they do. Like, yeah. This is a prim and proper woman. She had a level of elegance that Meryl Streep has in The Devil's Wears Prada, too. But I think the difference is that in that movie, 
you you get to learn why Meryl Streep is the way she is and why she's like so cold and detached I, versus so, like in the here the Baroness is just a narcissist and I that's think, just where they leave it. I think it. that's what like the difference is. Cruelty comes to Emma uh, no I'm sorry Cruelty comes to Meryl Streep's character and she gives it back. So all she's doing is like well somebody was off to me I'm gonna be off to you. When it comes to Emma Thompson's character the Baroness she is straight up I want to be number one. I don't care about you, which she does say throughout the movie. I don't care about others. She doesn't want to care about others. She's that feels it down. I just have more respect for that because <laughs> it's that whole I want to be number one, and that's it. That's simply it. Not I have my issues and I'm going to make up your issues. It's simply no. I'm going to be better. Well, you're kind of good. All right, you can be around me because you're going to make me even better. Well, yeah. But, Which is something, honestly, you should do in your life. But as long as you stay under me. That's the thing. Well, because that's where the narcissism comes in. Because, but like... But that's what you should do. You should always surround yourself with people who can make you a better person, too. Well, because she just... Uh, what's it called? Uh, Cruella designs that awesome centerpiece. And then she's like... And then when they go to celebrate, oh, yeah, we finished the line. She's like, a toast to me. And it's like, you didn't do anything. I designed that dress. Me. And technically she pulled out Emma Thompson from literally laying in garbage. <laughs> so, but like, that's the thing. She g- grabbed somebody who made her better. And like, I have more respect for that from, than somebody who's just being a bully because they're depressed in their life. <laughs> no offense. Nah. Yeah. I, yeah, I think, uh, also, like, I did want, the, the, however, here's the thing, as good as I did enjoy it, because I think the, the other thing, because I'm seeing, uh, not that there hasn't been, has been bad reviews, I think it's just there have been some, like, reviews that are like, ah, oh, it's kind of, or it's, it's all right, and, and a lot of them are, are hinge on the, the fact that everyone kind of plays, like, to type, like, Emma Thompson is, just the bad guy or just the antagonist with like who's a narcissist yes but there's nothing more past that except she's the bad guy cruella while there is more kind of to her she's just cruella after a point in the film like and i however i for me personally i just had fun with it but that was the whole point of cruella is to show how she became cruella i had fun with it i think it's i think for me this is one this is you know, we talk about all the time. There's some movies where you just accept things and have fun. Fast and Furious is one of them. For me, I don't hold so much of that stuff against this movie. I just had fun with it. I was like, all right, cool. No, We're- I, I, like, I agree about Emma Thompson's character and being just, she is just an narcissist. She's there to, like, make Cruella, make Cruella. But, like, the whole point of Cruella's movie is to show how she became Cruella. So, of course, that's going to be the last Destiny. That's going to be the end game and the end route. I think people forget that when it's sometimes an origin story. It's like, oh, yeah, they just became this person. This became that who they are. Well, yeah, that's the whole point of the film is to get to that end road. Well, I think the thing is that literally she flips it on like a switch. And then from that point on... She's just still doing the voice over and over. It doesn't seem like there's a struggle between Estella trying to still be Estella, and well, no, then she literally and then being Cruella. She sometimes she kills Estella. In fact, I think what would have helped is, even though it's not in here, it would have been nice to hear her cackle one time, because that's one of the other defining things about Cruella, um, in both the live action movie and the animation, is that she has that wicked, vo- uh, wicked laugh. That's almost like an evil witch laugh. Yeah, but she's not there yet, yet. But I mean, like, even by the time we hit the end of the movie, she doesn't do that. And I was like, okay, I feel like by the end of the movie, you are full Cruella. Even like when she's talking to her dead mom at the fountain, and she's like, yeah, I'm just going to be Cruella now forever. I'm like, all right, am I going to get a laugh? No Why laugh? Why she laugh? She's talking to her dead mother. She's telling her No, 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 not mother. right at that moment. I'm just saying, in my head, I was thinking, like, in the future, maybe? Like, in the re- in the rest of this movie? Maybe when you're at the house and you're, you're chilling? Yeah, like, but I think nothing. that would just terrify yeah, no everybody. No laugh. <laughs> if she... Because they, they perceive her now as, like, she's Cruella. She's, she's just a little bit of a narcissist, but she's sane, in a way. To just randomly cackle in a moment, there's no reason to be cackling. That's going to be one of those moments where it's like... All right, all right. 
maybe we should go now. But I feel like that would that would have solidified like, oh, now she's just full Cruella. Like Estella, like they, she says Estella's gone, but I'm like, I like to like I think the equate well, they I equate mean, Estella to her sympathy and well, kindness, like, it, like, and all of that's gone now. But it's not oh, completely gone because, like, in the hundred and one Dalmatians, she, in the cartoon and even the movie, she cares for Anita. No, she doesn't. A little bit. No, nope. she does. She doesn't care about Anita as far as like she tells her, "You have promise and you have passion. You know, don't marry a guy who's just going to drag you down." And technically, he and did. And as soon as he she does in the live action movie, she's like, "How could she do this to me?" It's like, "How could how could she betray me like this?" And it's like, "Betray." She can still work. Like, you act like she's just, like, literally cut you at the throat or something. Like, it's just, but did she's she still... Though? No, Anita kind of turned on her, didn't she? Yeah, after you kidnapped my dogs. Oh, before that, too. <laughs> and also came in here, disrespected my husband, disrespected the heck out my baby. Well, no, well, that's not even born somebody... yet. That's just disrespectful. Well, you... Baby. Yeah, in the in the 101 Dimensions live action movie, they... Add that she's pregnant too. Yeah, but all and the way Cruella's at the just end. Disre- no, at the beginning. At the beginning. At the oh, beginning. One hundred and one two. No, in one hundred and one Dalmatians, she's pregnant the same time Perdita's pregnant. At the end of the movie, she's having her second baby, but they're having a baby in the in the midst of the first movie. I don't know why, because it doesn't affect the plot at all. But she's having a baby, and Cruella is just so disrespectful about it. She's just like, "Oh, what? you're having a you're having one of those, huh?" Well, why do you have to be respectful when somebody has a kid? Because That's their decision, not mine. Because you want to bring that sticky fingered thing into the world, fine. That's being mean. That's why. I don't have to care though. <laughs> this is Listen, being you gotta rude. call out because your kid's sick. That's your problem. But that's not what I'm mine. saying though. Is why I'm like just lost an opportunity. She doesn't care about Anita. She barely cares about no. She anything cared about Anita Anita's got going career. On. She cares about Anita's work. Right. That's not and Anita, the time, though. At the moment, Anita, at the beginning, Anita did care about her work. And that's how they got together. She cared about her work in the sense that, that it's no different than there's actors who, when they go on set, they are the character. And then when they're off set, they go home and they are themselves. They keep it yeah, at the job. No, and then there's then the method have, actors. But then you have those actors that have literally spent like months and months and months away from their families. They have clearly chosen not work over their family. I'm just saying, then you have like, but then you have like method actors. I don't know. Like a Jared Leto, for example, who takes his work so far Jared that he Leto's would be a, willing no, to Leto's like, method actor. to he's crap just, on people all the time. Jared Leto's not a method actor. He's just, he's just, he's just stupid. <laughs> um, I'm just saying that in this, in this realm, oh, Anita's not a method actor in this analogy. She does her work. She does care about what she does. And then she leaves it alone and goes home. All right, Cruella just wants the work. She don't yeah. care about the person. Why do I? Anita have... could die right. tomorrow, and all she wants I'm... is that portfolio book. Cru... She ain't coming to the funeral. Cruella is paying for Anita's work. Why does she have to care about her personal life? Because that's called being a good boss. No, it's not. Listen, You're ju- there are no, no, managers no, no, no. at McDonald's no, no. who've been wait. murdered by the cash register no, cashiers a lot. But you, but you that literally reason. just said Anita leaves her work and goes home. And that's fine. But that doesn't mean I have to care when you go home about anything that goes on in your I'm home just life. Saying you're- I'm just saying I'm going to care about your work and your professionalism. And if you keep daydreaming about some guy or thinking about, <laughs> oh, what do I have to make for dinner for the kids, man or woman? I don't care. You're interfering now with what I'm paying for you to do. All right. I'm paying for your work. I'm paying for you to help grow my business. Okay, but and now you're just disrupting it. But here's the so thing. So now I don't want to keep you. Let me let, let me hit you with this, though. Cruella in the 101 Dalmatians movie. We're going to get back to Cruella in a sec, the actual movie. But before, let me just say this, though. In 101 Dalmatians, she fires Anita. Why? Not because Anita stopped working or isn't doing good work, but because Anita won't give up her puppies to her to be murdered. That's why she fires her. Capitalism. That's not fair. That's see. That's what I mean. She don't give a damn about Anita. I never said she gave a damn about Anita. I said she gave a damn about Anita's career at work. So it's just you know, it's like so she don't care, and it's just like and it's uh, to go back to Cruella. I really was hoping that they were gonna hit that point where it's like, yes, they ended off on a pretty good note 
But I think it would have been like a full wrap up if they had ended it where she is the evil villainous, like no more sympathy, no more empathy, Cruella. And she just cackles one good time. Because, and even if Jasper and Horace would be like, oh, we don't like that. They're we gonna, know that they're still going to stick around because the other movies the exist. The laugh is something that's definitely just not there yet. She hasn't, you're right, she hasn't fully written, r- gotten rid of Estella. Because if she had, she wouldn't have given the puppies or ha- even had those people still in her house. Yeah. I, I really, uh, yeah. I, although, I, like, that's just, that's a minor complaint. My only major complaint is some of the editing in this movie. More specifically, the music. Yeah, you had a big problem with the music. I don't, and it, what's the thing is, do I want the soundtrack to this movie? Yes, I do. I love a lot of those songs. Do I think they were used well in this movie? No, no, I don't. A few times, I did say there were a few times where I was like, all right, that's a good song to play at this, at this uh, during this moment. I forget the title of the song, but when they're playing that song during her runway show, it's like, now I want to be a dog. I was like, that's perfect. That's exactly the song that's replay. It fits somatically because it's like the Dalmatians oh, thing. Voice. Thank you. <laughs> like that's, it fits perfectly. It was phenomenal. But there's moments literally at the end of this movie is a perfect example. The end of this movie, they start playing uh, Black... They played, they played like three different songs. Yeah. And then the last like 10 minutes of the film. They played Black... It's like they were, run, they were like, oh, we still have songs that we paid for. Just throw them all in the end. Throw them all in the end. It's like, okay... Like one after the other, yeah. Just just turn I mean, the radio you dial. It. <laughs> and you can just, get it in. You can get it in. I will. I it was will, really weird. I think the thing I didn't get Joker vibes from this, and we brought this up. We got Suicide Squad vibes. Yes, from this, the way they were using the music, where they would just the person would just start walking, and there would be music playing, and it's like, why are you trying to fill the dead air like that? Like that's weird. I would have preferred some score, just like some anthemic music. Or, like, or just some underlining soft music. The music, like, she, there is a scene right before she goes into a London shop where they loudly play, you know, some band or some music or something. And she walks, like, maybe three steps before she gets into the shop and she looks around and it's like, there wasn't a need at all for that music. If anything, you could have just let the last scene sound draw into that next scene there was no reason for that music i think they were just trying to be because cruella is like high fashion they're trying to be cool by like having all these popular songs in there but the thing is it it there's a certain because like i think of people like edgar wright um quentin tarantino other people use a lot of pop music in their stuff james gunn too guardians of the galaxy and the thing is, is that a lot of those directors, though, they know how to skirt the line between being cool and just being cheesy. Mm. Sometimes. I would say Quentin Tarantino is starting to lose his luster on that. Yeah, <laughs> but I will at least give him that Quentin Tarantino does pick some, like, weird songs I've never even heard of. Or songs that you don't think about. So at least he'll, like, really dig through the crates to find, like, a, 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 some, a, a Still, but irregular it's, it's, hit. Oh, it, it, I mean, it doesn't matter. You're putting music and some, and like you're not wrong about the score. Scores would have been better. The a lot of those, you know, directors and whoever was directing Cruella put music with lyrics and voices and everything. It was straight up just music playing. Yeah, no matter well, the actual. What was music. the one? I forget the song, but yeah, there is one that one scene where she just starts singing a song. But the song the is boots also are made, playing. The boots are made for walking. Right. Which, yeah, it was weird. She's and like, I was and I asked you. I was like, on. is the song playing like in the shop or something? Because she's but singing even, as if she's singing to the track. She. It would have been fine if she just was like singing it, and then the music started playing. Yeah, like when she woke up, yeah. passed out or something. Or no, when she like when she just if she walked out of the elevator and started singing these boots like mumbling as she was doing singing. And then as she got into this like window space design to redesign it, the music started playing to kind of show that she's going to do a chaotic, chaotic scenes coming. Mm-hmm. And these boots are made for walking is that is a song about, you know, walking away. Um, and, you know, just have going into that. No, this song played as the elevator doors open. She started mumbling it. I was like, is this, is she hearing it? Like we hear it? 
I, is it in the store? Like, it made no sense. Yeah. It was a little weird. No, they I th- they chose good songs, but I think they just were, like, just cramming it. Anytime somebody wasn't talking, music was playing. Yeah. I don't know. Um, that was weird to me, and I think, I think as good as Jasper does is a good job. Uh, this is also something though that I I do agree with you. The relationship between Jasper and Cruella was very weird because I wasn't sure if they were trying to set them up as a couple or not. Because there's multiple times where Jasper's kind of trying to be that voice of reason to be like Cruella. I think you're going a little too far. You need to you need to calm down, and. But then Emma Stone would just be Cruella back to him. Yeah. And it just didn't match. It didn't fit. It felt like they were in two separate films, kind yeah, of, a... with the way their dialogue worked between each other. I think acting-wise, he did a great job with yeah, what yeah. he was given. It just felt weird. It didn't feel uh, succinct, like they were in the same story. I mean, if anything, I think the storyline was good. I think the movie was good. But if if you aren't a really a fan of Cruella de Vil or, you know... The music thing will bother you. I say just watch this movie for the fashion because they really did go all out. They did their the costume design for this movie, going for Emma Thompson's costumes to Emma Stone's costumes were absolutely insane. Oh the, yeah, the, the cosplay made. community is going to have a oh, grand old time like, trying was... to cosplay these. Oh costumes. yeah, no, these are are fantastic. They stuck to that whole punk. Early 60s, 70s vibe in London. Mm-hmm. They did really well. She, you know, as we spoke earlier about getting that vintage style and then kind of just tearing it apart and putting it back together to create something new. So let alone, you know, everything else in the movie, the costume design is just something you should watch for the film. I love I think the... It's beautiful. I love the capers. They're so creative. The moths was super creative. Yeah. I did not expect that to be... How she got the moths in there with the with the eggs, yeah, with the eggs that was, or cocoons. I assume like that was really cool. One of her henchmen brought in like the stones or the eggs, and I assume that's how she was gonna steal those. Yeah, put on her outfit, you know, to be like, oh look, I have what you have. But it turned out something more clever, and just the whole movie, their capers were just so much more clever than anticipated like somebody put real thought into this film and i'll give them credit yeah like how do you pull a fashion crime like what would that be and they did a great job of always coming up with really interesting creative ideas for each one that establishes why she is like a fashion forward thinker but also like something visually cool to see that when you see it you're just like because i remember when she felt the trash i was like okay trash dress that's cool, I guess. And then when they drive off in the train, it's a train of just yeah, ripped awesome. up dresses that are all sewed together. I, I was like, that's awesome. That's a smart idea. <laughs> I love the dress of, uh, there's a point where Emma Thompson's trying to get out of the car and they actually lock her in. And uh, Cruella gets on top of the car and she's fanning her dress pretty much over the entire car. And there's a slit where Emma, Stone's, Emma Thompson's head is peeking out. And as it unfurls, there's also a banner that says the past. So it kind of looks like she's just like literally on top of her. Like this is the past I'm standing on. And I just... love the future makeup. How it was per The T was perfectly yeah, was really slid well across done. the eyes. That looked epic. Like it was every look she had was it, fantastic. It was as amazing. And I'll post some of those on the Instagram because I fell in love with a lot of them. Also, uh, real quick though. One last negative to mention also that I thought was weird is the CG dogs. Yeah, you were bothered by those. Some of those, like, because some of them I understand, like, the Dalmatians, like, being, like, kicking <laughs> uh, well, I mean, Estella's mom off the bridge. All right, I get that. It's, that's hard to train a dog to do that. But there are some times where the dogs just be chilling. And they're still see or just be walking. And they're CG. And I was like, why? Well, I mean, they use animals less and less on stage because the animals, one, are unpredictable, and two, it's kind of cruel sometimes when you have to train them. I just, I'm just thinking to, like, after watching the live-action 101 Dalmatians and all of the animals, they like, dogs of many different breeds. Some of them, you know, horses, cats, other animals. They train for that movie. And they all are fantastic actors. That's true. And so it's like... I get using the CG dogs for like the actiony stuff that even getting a normal dog to do would take months upon months of training. But so that stuff made sense. 
But there were some scenes where I'm like, all they're doing is walking from one location to the next. I don't see why these dogs need to be CG. And the only reason it's... I, 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 Maybe somebody on set was allergic. The only reason it was bothering me is because they're so obviously CG. I think if they had looked a lot cleaner, especially in a world where you've made Lion King, where those lions, despite not being able to emote, they at least look real. So it's like, you you could make a real looking down, a much it's more still, real looking Dalmatian. Still, no, I think the Lion King didn't look as real either. They looked, to me, the same comparison. I don't know. I think Lion King looked better, but maybe that's because there's nothing to compare it to except other that's CG true. animals there in the were, movie. It was all CGI, which I don't like that they called the live action Lion King. I it's never CGI. called it that, and I was no, like, I'm pe- people. Oh, no, I know. I'm just saying for myself to let the record show. I never called it live action because it's not. It's just a more expensive cartoon to me, is how I treated it. Okay, so for this movie, what grade would you get before we get more into CGI? Because I know you have a lot of comments about that. Uh, not too many. That was just like really it. No, I was just CGI see. about general. Oh. You always have some commentary about CGI. Uh, yeah. Uh, th- no, um, I'd say, you know, to finalize like this movie and how I feel about it, I think it's a great film. I think it's very fun. Um, if they, like, they do a Maleficent 2 and people were kind of okay-ish to that. So I hope if people really love this movie, that we will get a Cruella too. I don't know what it would be. I didn't think there'd be a Melissa Finn too. Uh, I didn't. I don't I, even think I'm saying that right. It, I don't know. I don't know if Cruella two would be like the they start of One Hundred One Dalmatians. Yeah, we just have to move into One Hundred One Dalmatians. Maybe that is the sequel to it. That has to be right. Yeah, but you're great. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, I think it's a great movie. You should see it. The, my hangups might not be your hangups. Those are just my personal things. But overall, I still had fun watching this movie. I think everyone did a great job. Also, we didn't mention it, but real quick, did want to say, didn't mind the race bending either, some of the characters. Oh, like yeah. of Roger and Anita being brown-skinned people. I don't know... Jasper, too. Yeah, Jasper, too. Um, I, I know Anita's clearly black, but I don't know if Roger's supposed to be, like, Indian or... He looked more uh, Muslim to me maybe i know in india um, there's a lot of indian uh people of indian descent in london london yeah. due to just colonization Which it, it would have made sense that if they could at least have one indian character in there because you're right there was a lot of the colonization there and a lot of the british shows movies won't show that yeah <laughs> so, so um but i mean nonetheless i didn't mind the race bending i thought it was fine no it's nice to know that people of color existed you know back in the 60s yeah it's a possibility um but um other than that though yeah overall my grade for this movie is definitely a b plus it, it just shy of an a minus for me just because of the few things i mentioned those are but again those are my personal things it, you might go into this movie and just enjoy the heck out of all of it Love the love the fashion, love the dogs, everything. So, those are my thoughts. Um, I'll give this movie an A actually, because I actually my hangups were not your hangups, like you said. Mm-hmm. I didn't care about the CGI dogs. The music did bother me. I will say that the music. I, sometimes you could just have silence. It's it's okay, Disney. It's okay. Um, <laughs> I just. I really enjoyed it. It was a good, fun movie to just sit and watch. They didn't leave any, like, openings either or loose threads. No. They, they carefully wrapped up their story. Um, every People were clever, which I was really surprised. The fashion was so well done and i think that's what surprised me more Mm because i remember watching the animation and the live action and the fashion was great but it was like animal print and dalmatian print and stuff like that you know and that always seemed like old crazy lady to me Mm -hmm. when it's like animal print um this was truly something like i could even see myself type of wearing if i was in the back in like the 60s this was something that was seems like people would actually wear and then even the fashion of the older women like emma thompson's character and her high society people were super well done because they were different they were unique they were not something you'd see at like a normal elegant party this was definitely a fashion party but it wasn't the crazy standards you would see nowadays where people are just it's a shock and awe value yeah and every entrance Every entrances the characters make 
was so well done. Oh, they're yeah. swaying, they're moving. The outfits worked with them. They did work with the music well when Emma Thompson first comes. Emma Thompson. Emma Stone, both her names. Emma. When, I'm sure that got oh, confusing on set, I know. too. <laughs> well, I feel like you would always say Miss Thompson. I, what he addresses her as. I, but, what but, I do is I just, sometimes if it's multiple people, I refer to one as their character. So that way it's easier to differentiate. Probably they would have kept calling her Corella. Um, Corella's character, when she entered the party the first time in that red dress with the fire, it was well done. She still had a goofiness to her. You could still tell that Estella, part of her, was alive, even in her Cruella phase. Because she was still goofy and kind of silly. And a little bit lighter. And when they introduced her, she still had that vibe to her. So, like, I think this movie was just well done for a Disney movie live action because a lot of times yeah when they're doing these like intro movies they get weird or they're trying to force you to be sympathetic like they did with Melissa Fisset, but Maleficent Maleficent <laughs> or you know they try to show you the newest technology you have they like with the Lion King you know they're trying to almost brag like look we can do a whole CGI movie and look how well it's done well they rely too much on we're just gonna tell the same story but yeah. it's gonna look prettier and it's like well, so I, give me a new story. They had the same story for Sleeping Beauty. Cinderella is always the same story. But Corella really was her own story. It wasn't about the Dalmatians. It wasn't about, you know, Anita and Roger. This was yeah. Cruella's story. And I like that one. It's finally a backstory. It's not a lead up into the other main story. No, this is Cruella and who she is. And it wasn't tied... To the other characters that will eventually, you know, become part of her story. So I give this story, I give this movie an A. Yeah, my only big issue is mainly with the music. I found that kind of bothersome. I think, yeah, I, and you're right. They, the connective tissue to the other movies feels like just Easter eggs. Yeah. That are well weaved into the story, I'll admit. They changed a few jobs around. Yeah. But Anita and Roger feel like they are a part of the story, not like they're just there because and, they're in the original. Yeah, story. and you did mention earlier a lot of the live action films will rely a lot on nostalgic or like heavily like look at this whole scene. It is exactly like step by step. That's how you feel. Corella doesn't it doesn't have that. You have maybe the nostalgic feel with her hair and that's about it. Everything else is simply a Cruella movie. This is its own thing. Yeah, it's not 101 Dalmatians. This is Cruella, and this is how she got her name. This is how she became who. So I, I give this an A because it just definitely became. It was more than I had anticipated at all from a Disney live action in general. Yeah, this was a legit surprise. Yeah, and, it was good. Uh, I. I will say this is the first live action Disney movie I am actually jazzed about. Like after yeah, seeing, yeah, no, I <laughs> like I'm actually like, oh no, this is great. I loved everything about it. I might watch it again a little bit later. Yeah, I'm not gonna so, lie. I I would be willing to like if a friend is like, I haven't seen Cruella yet. Hey, we're going to the theater. We're going to see Cruella right I'd now. I'd be down for that too. I'd be. F <laughs> this is a Disney live action film that you are okay seeing twice. Yes, that's yes, one yes, way yes. to put it. Yeah. yeah. So, but. all right. Socials. <laughs> oh, there's so much more. Uh, oh, but before we go, also, yeah, if you have seen Corella, since it is coming out this weekend, um, or, well, this is going up on Monday, so <laughs> you've probably out. already seen it. Um, if you have seen it, what did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Why? Let us know in the comments below this YouTube video, or if you want, you can also just like message us. We are at the first ones to die on all of our social medias. That includes the Instagrams, the Facebooks, the Twitters, all that good stuff. So you can find us there to tell us what you thought about Cruella. Did you know? And if you would maybe enjoy seeing a sequel to this, like you know, maybe another chapter. Mm -hmm. And where can they find you at your personal social? Uh, you can find me at not Jerome Rett. And at RoboZoo Media to find out about other stuff I got going on. Um, yeah. And you can find me at Alex and Nobody on Insta. And I handle the TikTok account for the first ones to die. And then also for our third host, who will be back next week, uh, Jonathan Keys is just his social on Twitter and Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's his basic one. So yeah, just come find us and chat us. Let us know what you think about Cruella. What was your favorite fashion design? What song did you think didn't need to be in there? <laughs> or what was like your favorite caper scene? Just come let us know. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for listening. We'll catch you next week. And uh, 
Have a good night. Bye. Or day. Whenever you're watching this. Or re or re Bye. This. Bye. <laughs>